The biggest mistake most people make is to look for accommodation in London. London is mad expensive, which is why in today's video, I will be telling you the 10 best towns to stay in just outside London. Hi guys. So you got offered a job in London or you're looking for jobs in London or you're looking to study in London. What is the first thing you do? Uh, well, obviously you look for accommodation in London, right? You check the rates and uh, where you can stay and all of those and check what your life is going to be like when you live in London. Hey! Wrong answer! Trust me, this is absolutely the wrong move. The biggest mistake most people make while moving to the UK, especially if they're going to work in London, is to look for accommodation in London and that is honestly not the way to go about it and here's why. Now, for starters, London is mad expensive. You know that the rates of houses for rental or to buy property in London is absolutely insane. Now, even if you do manage to find something, you're not going to be saving much because, well, all of the money and all of the money you earn is just going to go towards rent. You're not going to save anything. What's the point? Now, even if the first two problems are dealt with, the honest truth is that you're going to get a house which is half the size of houses everywhere else. It's going to be really tiny and you're then going to regret that decision as you start staying there for a longer time and buying more things, accumulating more belongings. So the options are you either sacrifice all of your savings uh, and get a decent house in London or you live in a tiny little shoebox because that's all you can afford, right? Now here's the thing. The average rent for a studio property in London and in a decent area is £1,358 per month and this is just a studio apartment, mind you. If you're looking at getting a 1BHK in London, it's approximately £1,712 a month for a 1BHK. A 2BHK on an average is £2,297 a month. That is a lot of money, my friends. And to add to it, if you think about the rising expenses and you think about inflation, not really a smart move if you ask me. Which is why in today's video, I will be telling you the 10 best towns to stay in just outside London, which have a really short commute, could save you big bucks and would make for great and beautiful places to live in. Now, with that, let's dive in. Now, we're starting off with the absolute best and there is a possibility I'm a little biased over here or maybe not, but at the top of the list is Maidenhead, which is where I stay. Now, here's the thing. A lot of lists come out during the year about the best places to stay in the UK, and very often Maidenhead is on all of those lists. And to be honest, it's one of the two places that we had considered moving to right from the start when we were planning our move to the UK. Now, we had certain criteria while looking for a house to stay in the UK, which was proximity to Paddington, um, how good the schools are, how many good schools there are, whether it's close to a nearby town, crime and safety, uh, whether it has natural beauty, whether it's easily uh, accessible to other big towns and cities. So like you see, it was a rather fairly comprehensive list. Now, many towns checked a lot of those boxes, but Maidenhead checked out most of the boxes for us. And the other thing that was really important to us was uh, the number of good schools versus the number of people that stayed in the town because we were joining Midyear and we were worried whether we would get um, a seat for our child in school or not. Apart from that, it was also the vibes that the town gave for us. We hadn't been to Maidenhead before we moved here, but we did a lot of research and checked out videos and photos of what the town looked like. And the town looked really nice and relaxed and it had this these great vibes about it, which is also part of the reason why we really liked it. And 10 months later, here we are. Now, that being said, let's talk about the actual specifics of why Maidenhead is so good. Maidenhead is located to the west of London and its distance from Paddington is 23 minutes. And now Maidenhead also has the Elizabeth Line, so it's faster and cheaper travel. A 2BHK on an average costs £2,482 and the median cost, which is basically the midpoint in terms of price between the houses, like there's an equal number of houses which are more expensive and less expensive, the median cost is £1,650. We ourselves pay £1,600 for a 3BHK, so that's great. There's a fair number of properties listed for rent. There are 155 properties and of which 36 of them have popped up in the past 14 days, which also indicates that there, if you're house hunting, you have a lot of options. Maidenhead has 37 schools and colleges, of which 29 of them are either good or outstanding. Now, the good thing about Maidenhead is you've got lots of nature trails, there's lakes, there's the Thames Riverside, which is gorgeous. It's close to Bray, which boasts of two Michelin star restaurants. And there are farms close by for the kids, lots of clean parks, and Windsor, 
which is the Queen's home, and it's just 15 minutes away. Now, in terms of shopping, because Maidenhead is a town, you don't have too many big names. You've got your Sainsbury's and Tesco's, Marks and Spencer's, H&M, but if you want to shop and you want more options, you can either hop over to Reading or Slough, which are both really close by. If you look at crime, Maidenhead is relatively safe, with just 63 reported instances for every 1,000 people. So in terms of crime, Maidenhead is probably one of the safest places in the UK. Now, if I had to sum up the highlights of Maidenhead, I'd say you should definitely go for it if you'd like a short commute to London, if you'd like to be able to walk down the gorgeous Thames Riverside, if you want to live in a quaint yet beautiful town, and some place which is ideally located to most other bigger cities. Now, if you remember earlier, I said we had considered two places. The other place we had considered was St. Albans. Now, truth be told, between Maidenhead and St. Albans, I was initially more in favor of St. Albans because it's, it's a historic town and it's gorgeous from the pictures. But to be very honest, when we moved here, and we had moved here just before the school term was about to start and a lot of people were changing houses because of that, we found only one property in St. Albans which matched our requirements and about three or four or five properties in Maidenhead. So whether we liked it or not, there were no options available in St. Albans. So we found house, a house in Maidenhead and we actually, well, don't regret that decision at all. But St. Albans is a really good place to consider. St. Albans is located to the northwest of London and its distance from Pancras International is 25 minutes. Now, if your office is going to be close to the northwest of London, this would be a good place to consider. But if your office is going to be in the south or the southeast, you may want to give this a miss. A 2BHK property on an average costs £1,829 and the median range is £1,498. They currently have 112 properties on rent and in the past 14 days, 52 properties have popped up. St. Albans has 55 schools and colleges, of which 50 are good or outstanding. It has lots of walking trails, a hardwood forest and some great parks. In terms of shopping, there are plenty of options available for groceries and big lifestyle brands. The crime is only 59 per 1,000 residents, which makes it relatively safe. Now, if you'd like to live in an affluent part of town, be a part of history and live close to some great Roman ruins, St. Albans is a wonderful place to be. Moving on. The next on the list is Faversham in Kent. This is located on the southeast of London and its distance to St. Pancras is 1 hour and 9 minutes. The average 2BHK property costs £963 and the median is £900. They've currently got 15 properties listed for rent and only 7 properties that have come up in the past 14 days. Now, since it's a small town, it's got 13 schools and colleges, of which 12 of them are good or outstanding. If you like nature, they've got King's Woods and easy access to the sea from Faversham. They've got many boutique stores and a crime rate of 93 per 1,000 residents. Some of the highlights of Faversham would be it's Kent's oldest market town, its historic pubs and the fact that it's close to the sea. Moving on to Reading. Reading is very close to Maidenhead and is located on the west of London and it takes about 30 minutes to go into Paddington. Now, even though Reading is further on the west compared to Maidenhead, a lot of trains reach Paddington faster than trains from Maidenhead because it's a much bigger city. So it's pretty well connected. The average 2BHK costs £1,409 and the median rate is £1,191. There are currently 641 properties listed for rent and 138 of them have popped up in the past 14 days. Now, since Reading is a major city, it has 87 schools and colleges, of which 61 of them are either good or outstanding. Reading has plenty of trails and reserves all around and because it's a big city, you have big city fields, all the major stores, a lot of restaurants, multiple cinemas, nature parks and so forth. The other great thing about Reading is because it is a really big city, many big brands have either their headquarters or branches there. You have the big four, you have Microsoft, Oracle, Cisco, Huawei, Verizon, KPMG, PepsiCo, Virgin 3, and these are just some of the names. The crime in Reading is just 70 per 1,000 residents. So if you'd like to live the city life without the price tag of London, or be close to an office if you work in any of these offices in Reading, a really good option to consider is the city of Reading. 
Moving on to Red Hill, Surrey. This is located to the south of London and its distance from London, Victoria is 40 minutes. A 2 BHK property here costs on an average £1,611 per month and the median cost is £1,350. It currently has 59 properties in rent and 21 of them were listed in the past 14 days. Now, Red Hill is a medium-sized town, so it has 35 schools and colleges, of which 22 are good or outstanding. If you like adventure and walking paths, Red Hill is the place to be. Because it's a medium-sized town, it has a few options for shopping, but its highlights are fine dining options, distilleries, horse riding and golf courses. Red Hill has a crime of 61 per 1,000 residents. Next up in the southeast, we have Seven Oaks in Kent. Located to the southeast of London, its distance from Charing Cross is 35 minutes. The average 2 BHK costs £2,160 and the median cost is £1,650 a month. They currently have 70 properties listed on rent and 20 of them have come up in the past 14 days. Now, because it's a small town, they have 24 schools and colleges, 14 of which are good or outstanding. Seven Oaks also gives you access to gardens, parks, lakes, and wildlife reserves. Because it's a small town, again, you have some options for shopping, but you may want to go to a close-by town to buy more varied options. They have a crime of 65 per 1,000 residents. And if you'd like to have access to history mixed with nature and access to a vineyard, Seven Oaks is the place to be. Moving on to Guildford, which is located to the southwest of London. The distance to London Waterloo is 35 minutes by train. The average 2 BHK costs £1,919 and the median cost is £1,800. Now, because Guildford is a major town, they have 506 properties currently listed for rent and 78 of them popped up in the past 14 days. Guildford has 44 schools and colleges, 32 of which are good or outstanding. It also has access to many natural parks, natural trusts and woods. Because it's a major town, they also have a large selection in cases of shopping and lots of varied options. The crime is 70 per 1,000 residents. And if you'd like excellent schools, access to castles, art galleries and the balance of rural and city life, well, you might want to consider Guildford. Oh, did I mention it's great for families? Next, we have Hitchin, which is in Hertfordshire and is located to the north of London. The distance from King's Cross is 34 minutes. The average 2 BHK property costs £1,192 and the median cost is £1,100. They currently have 45 properties in rent and 18 of them popped up in the past 14 days. Now, with it being a medium-sized town, they have 31 schools and colleges, 23 of which are good or outstanding. They also have great nature reserves and some gorgeous lavender fields close by. Because it's a medium-sized town, they have a good number of shopping options and a crime rate of only 58 per 1,000 residents. Some of its highlights are it's a charming medieval market town. They have excellent schools, varied entertainment, shops, cafes and restaurants. Next up, we have Jarrod's Cross in Buckinghamshire, which is to the northwest of London. The distance from Paddington is 34 minutes. The average 2 BHK costs £3,046, but the median cost is only £1,725 for a 2 BHK. They currently have 40 properties on rent and 10 which have come up in the past 14 days. Now, with it being a small town, it has 20 schools and colleges, 14 of which are good or outstanding. They've also got a country park, odd farms park and an overall beautiful place. Because it's a small town, it has some shopping options, but you can always hop over to the next town. It's an absolutely gorgeous town with 52 crimes per 1,000 residents. And rounding off the list, we have Epping in Essex, which is in the northeast of London. Its distance to bank is 41 minutes. The average property here costs £1,409 and the median cost is £1,300. There are 11 properties in rent and only three popped up in the last 14 days. Now, with it being a small town, there are only 11 schools and colleges, of which seven are good or outstanding. Epping also has access to lots of gardens, parks and farms and some options for residents to shop. It has a crime of 87 per 1,000 residents. 
But if you're looking for high quality schools, a variety of shops and variety of leisure activities, Epping is the place to be. Whew. Um, I'm pretty sure I've convinced you that Maidenhead is the place to be when you move here and you can move here and thank me for my wonderful insights into how great Maidenhead is. But here's the thing, uh, something you should bear in mind, especially if you're coming from a big city in India, is that a lot of these places listed for small towns. So they come with their own pros and cons. And one of the cons that I've experienced because we came from Bangalore was the fact that um, you don't have too many stores around and when it comes to eating out there aren't too many options but to be very honest this was the life we wanted we wanted a more laid-back life we didn't want to live in the bustling madness that we had come from and if that is the sacrifice we have to make i'm happy to make it because i just feel it's a lot more um it's, it's a better life for our family here and it's just absolutely gorgeous and that's something you need to decide if that's for you or not. Or you can always live in Reading, which is a bigger city and has all the amenities you'd need. Now, here's the thing. If you're moving to the UK, the most, most important thing you need to figure out is the cost of living in the UK. I'm not sure if you've already seen this video. If not, I highly recommend you do because, well, the costs are skyrocketing in the UK. Everything's getting more expensive. So if you're looking for a job in the UK or if you've been offered a job, you generally need to know how much you're going to spend, how much you're going to make. So I would largely, largely suggest that you watch this video.